sing in the Holy Spirit for Jesus is here Nagaya rabasya matala jigarabasa tayarabaye o jarabarane kisataye o sia salando shete makiara se mala sua kate kato shigarabasya Marando Sakatia Oh Jesus, we worship you. Father, we honor, we adore you this morning. For you are God and God all by yourself. We exalt you, Father. There is none beside you, Lord. We have searched, we have searched, we have searched. We've tried to fill our lives, Father, but we realize that there is no one like Jehovah. We have tasted and we have seen that you are good and you are true and you are loved. This morning, Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord, and we ask, Father, everything that is not of you, burn, burn, burn away. Burn it away, burn it away, burn it away, Jesus. Yara la era satara kera do salae. Jesus, we worship. Why don't you just go speak something to this Jesus? Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much he means to you. His name is Jesus. The lover of our soul. He is the one that makes everything beautiful. He is the one that completes us. He is the one that feels like no one can feel. This morning we've come to worship this Jesus. This Jesus that the angels bow down and worship morning, day and night. Jesus we worship you. Oh, just take a moment, just bask in his presence. The Holy Spirit is ministering to your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name we have worshiped in Jesus name we have worshiped come on saints of God put your hands together and celebrate your king my king your Lord the majestic one is the first Sunday in the month of May excited people saints of God believers go ahead and shout hallelujah praise Jesus Hallelujah. You may please be seated this morning. Trust me. I don't feel we should stop worshiping. Praise God. But we have to move on. Such is the presence and the awesomeness when you come into God's presence. And when you live in his presence, it's absolutely remarkable. It's a joy. It's a privilege. It's an honor to know this God, this Jesus. He makes everything right. He is the constant. He is the missing X. He is the one that completes everything. Jesus. I want to welcome the person sitting beside you this morning. Say welcome to a new month. And compliment them. Tell them it's good to celebrate grace and sit beside them this morning as we spend some time in the word of God. I trust that your heart will be built, you'll be established in the faith, 
you will come to understand the key and what is priority in the heart of God and we will walk in it and our lives shall be better for it in Jesus name this morning we're going to be talking quickly about soul winning the winning of souls or what some people refer to as evangelism and we're going to be talking about what it means to win a soul how to win a soul and the mindset that we must have as believers as saints of God so soul winning is a topic or a subject that is not popularly preached or thought in church because it is what we are expected to do and be on a day-to-day -day basis. It is who we are in Christ. It is our primary assignment. It is what God has sent us to do. It is not what we are thought. It is what comes to us by revelation because we are passionate about the things of God. Soul winning is the first and priority of every believer in this age and in this dispensation as Jesus Christ has come died raised from the dead buried for our justification it is our responsibility as responsible children of God to spread the gospel of Jesus Jesus Christ when he was living the final thing he said is go into all the world and make disciples of all nations teaching them and so that is our primary assignment and that is what we'll be talking about this morning our soul winning is something that we are aware of, but it's just not top of our mind. So from time to time, we need to remind ourselves or take ourselves back to the first place, to take ourselves to, to the thing that is paramount and priority in the heart of God. More than the substance we chase, more than the connections we seek to have, more than the assets we seek to acquire, this is kingdom business. And this is the salvation and the winning of souls. So soul winning, if we can put a definition to it, is the totality, the summation of everything that a believer does for an unbeliever to expose the light and the gospel of Jesus, to bring an unbeliever to a place of repentance and acceptance of the free gift of salvation. That is what soul winning is. Everything that we do as saints, as believers, to ensure that an unbeliever gets to know about Jesus. That is what soul winning is. And that is what is key to the heart of the Father. That is what we are going to talk about. That is what we are going to be passionate about. In our generation, we will be men and women that are passionate about soul winning. I have a burden in my heart this morning. And it's the burden to remind us of our first assignment, of our first priority. The salvation of souls. It's a burden that we must all carry for Jesus. In the industry, in the workplace, in the marketplace, in the environment, in the community. Are you known as someone that is passionate about kingdom business? We have strategies to... To gain the first 1,000 clients, we have strategies to penetrate this part of Lagos. We have strategies to take over Nigeria for the products and the gifting that God has given to us. But we do not have strategies to win souls for the kingdom. As a child of God, this must be first in your mind. I'm telling you, the Bible says that he that wins a soul is wise. How incredible that is. If you want to get wisdom, go win a soul. If you are stuck, you need a strategy, you need a marketing plan, go and win a soul. In the process, the Holy Spirit will tell you how to network. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to communicate. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to make that, to get that conversion. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to turn that customer that referral into a business soul winning and that is a priority that we must all have as christians as as believers and let me just say because a lot of people struggle a lot with the concept 
or with the, you know, practice of winning souls. Because they, they ask themselves these questions. You know, what am I going to say? How are they going to receive me? I'm not even worthy enough. Oh, this person has known me. This person is used to me. We are too close. We are, you know, we're like five and six. Now that I've found Christ, how exactly are they going to recept, accept me? So there's always this fear of rejection. But can I prove to you this morning? Can I tell you this morning that you have no ability, you have no capacity, you have no knowledge, no intellect to convert a soul. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Our job, our part, our responsibility is to speak the good news and leave the rest, leave the conversion, leave the conviction to the Holy Spirit. This morning, are you going to do your part? Are you going to carry this burden for Jesus? Are you going to stay on your lane and let God stay on his own lane? I love the way God works. I just say, God, I've done my own. Now is your time. And countless times I have seen the Lord move in diverse ways. Ways that I never imagined. But as long as I just did my part. Because none of us can convict the soul. You can't even convict yourself. <laughs> And I love the way Apostle Paul says it. He says, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but it was God that gave the increase. Talking about the apostles, when the Holy Ghost came in the day of Pentecost and they continued in fellowship, the Bible says that God added to them daily such as were saved. Not the apostles, God himself. All they did was just to do their part. Fellowship and you know, God did the rest. So this morning, I'm challenging us as a church, as a people, as a generation, as, as Christians that are well thought to do our part. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor, are you going to do your part? Please get a response. Get a response. It is our duty as believers to do our part and the Holy Spirit to do his. The moment we got born again, the responsibility of soul winning became ours. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 and 18 that God has reconciled us to himself by Christ and he has now given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. That is our portfolio. We, have, we talk about government and say this minister is not performing, that minister is not doing right, that minister is not, doesn't know the job, but as a believer, are you performing in your own ministry? which is the ministry of reconciliation. Be a responsible minister. Hallelujah. Be responsible. Be responsible. The same way we take responsibility for our children, the same way we take responsibility for our jobs, you know, we plan and we strategize and say, okay, after this, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. We have everything written down. That is the same way we should take responsibility for the salvation of people that are not that are far from Christ. Praise the Lord. So let's read the scripture and let's see what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 in verse 35. Matthew chapter 9 in verse 35. And the Bible says. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they had fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth his laborers into his harvest. It's remarkable that Jesus Christ is saying this to us and he said it to the disciples thousands of years ago. Imagine if Jesus was saying this then. Imagine if, what Jesus will say now. They are everywhere. The harvest is truly, truly, truly ripe. It is ripe. It's about to drop. Ever seen, a, ever seen a fruit tree? You know that fruit? It's not called fruit. It's called what? Almond, I believe. When it's really ripe, it gets what? Red. And it's about to drop. 
And if you do not, you know, get it down, I don't want to go back memory lane, but if you don't get it down, what happens? It falls to the ground and rots away. That is the same thing. The harvest, the harvest is truly ripe. I'm telling you, the, the, the friends that you see, the people that you see, that you think they have it all put together, trust me. First class, Harvard, you know, makes presentation and speaks before governors and everything, but he's not saved. Trust me, he's just waiting for a little nudge from you. Just a little nudge. So we carry a burden. We carry a burden. We carry a burden. And the way we are conscious of this burden is to be kingdom-minded. Understanding that I am part of a kingdom. The kingdom of God. I'm not part of this world. In my kingdom, there are certain things that we do. There are certain things that we are particular about. There are certain things that we chase after. There are certain targets that we have. And it is so winning. So if you are conscious of the fact that I am part of a kingdom, then you are going to be conscious of the burden of soul winning. To be conscious of this burden, you must also be passionate or be moved with compassion. Bible says that Jesus looked at them, looked at them, and said, as beautiful as you are, as handsome as he is, he's like a sheep without a shepherd. Meaning he's just, you know, just scattered. Why? Because he's far from Christ. So to carry this burden for Jesus, you must be compassionate. It's bad enough that our society, right, you know, in a way, I don't want to use the word forces us to be focused on self, to be like, you know what, it's just about me, myself, my wife, my children, it's all about my biz, I don't care about you, if I talk to you, yes, it's fine, we can hang out, we can have all the good stuff, but when it comes to the important things of life, we never discuss those things with our friends. We never we don't, as we should. So you have to be compassion. Say compassion. 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 Have a compassionate heart. Don't let the hustle and bustle of Lagos, of Nigeria, of this world, to, to draw us from what we are meant to be compassionate about. Don't be dead to the world in terms of getting them saved and getting them to know Jesus. Praise the Lord. So a heart of compassion. We must train ourselves to have a heart of compassion for people. We must constantly catch ourselves from time to time and remind ourselves that we are the hands and we are the feet of Jesus. Praise the Lord. When I think about rapture, honestly, I'm scared. Truly scared for the people that are not saved because I mean, last month, we spent a lot of time talking about the rapture, the end time, the things that are going to happen at the end of day, you know, and everything, the great battle, and all of that. And I'm wondering, so you mean, and I keep asking, I say, God, are these people really going to go to hell? Is there no strategy? No, there is nothing. I mean, seriously, you're a loving father. Are they, is, is hell really going to happen? I ask. I don't know if you ask, but I ask. And God says, Yes. It's not about the emotion or how we feel or how we don't feel. Is it right? Is it wrong? The word of God has said it. He has given it to us. This is the template. This is what is going to happen. We just have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So when I think about the, 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 the reality of rapture, I carry this burden to win souls. Praise the Lord. When I also think about the fact that God desires that I bear fruit, that the reason he has saved me is so that I can save others, I carry a burden. And I don't know if you're about, if you are like me this morning, and when you think about these things, they, they must 
help you reflect and look at your life and say, okay, where can I make adjustment? Where am I doing right? Where am I not doing right? For some of us, we have been doing these things and that is good, congratulations. But there is yet much more that we can do. And for some of us, we are not yet doing this as we ought to. Today is a good day to start. It is just about you telling your story. And so what are the ways by which we evangelize? What are the ways that we tell people about the gospel of Jesus? Number one is by invitation. Inviting them to come into an environment where Jesus is. Invitation. I don't know what the last time you invited someone to church. Or you invited someone to, to a meeting. The Young and Married Conference is coming up this weekend. There are couples that you perhaps know that are struggling and perhaps you know that, you know what, this issue they are dealing with is not really a big deal if they just had Jesus. But you can invite them. That is an opportunity. As I'm speaking to you right now, there are people that are flashing through your mind. Those are the people that you need to talk to. Those are the people that you need to connect with on the level of their salvation. In John chapter 1 in verse 43, John chapter 1 in verse 43, the Bible talks about Jesus meeting a, a guy called Philip on his way to Galilee. And Bible says that Jesus met Philip and told Philip, you know what, Philip, come with me. And the Bible says that as Philip, you know, started going with Jesus, the Bible says that he saw Nathaniel. And he ran to Nathaniel and said, Nathaniel, we have found him. The one that, you know, the, the prophets talked about. The one that Moses talked about. We have found him in Nazareth. And Nathaniel said, is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth? You've told people, come to church, come to this. And people tell you, oh, church, why should I go to church? Oh, pastors are these, pastors are that. Do you know what is happening in church? Do you know the one that is sleeping with the other? Do you know the one that is stealing money? Ah, that guy that is a worker in your church. Ah, I did business with him. Can anything good come out of that? <sighs> you know what I'm talking about, right? And at times, it can be difficult. But like Philip, Philip did not argue with Nathaniel. When Nathaniel told him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He didn't argue. See, when you have tasted a product, you don't argue. The result of the product shows for itself. There's no argument. There's no argument. Man City will win the Premier League. No argument. <laughs> Liverpool fans, no argument. That's it. No argument. The product will show for itself. It will be tested... It will be tried, but it will show for itself. There's also no argument. Arsenal, my club, will win Europa. Hallelujah. Please encourage me. I don't know how, but we, 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 the Lord will help us. <laughs> There's no argument. So Philip told Nathaniel, he said, you know what? Come and see. That's the same thing. It's, you're, not, you're not arguing with people and you're know, trying to convince them. You know, you speak good English. You know the Bible. You can quote the scriptures. You know, you can run through it. Like Pastor Deji would say, the perpendicular rhetoric, something, something. That's not it. It is the Holy Ghost that convicts. Hallelujah. So, invitation. Invitation. And Bible says that as Nathaniel got to Jesus, he had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus told them things about himself. And so when you invite people to church, you're inviting them to meet divinity, to meet love, to meet Jesus. And that is why church people, we must be careful. Because when you meet people in church, you don't know who is Philip, you don't know who is Nathaniel. Don't be the stumbling block in their way. Do not be the one that will cut short their encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another way you can win a soul is by your testimonies. How many of us here have testimonies? God has been good to you. This year alone, ah, Baba, too much. God has been good. One of the ways you can win a soul is by sharing that testimony with them. And saying, you know, because for some of these people, for some of our friends, our loved ones, people we are trying to reach, we are the only Bibles that they will read up until the time that they will give their lives. But that friend knows that you, you were born with, with a blood condition, yet you were healed. That friend knows 
that the doctor said you could never have a baby. In fact, it was you and the friend that went for the abortion. And they told you that you can never have a baby. And that friend knows but that Jesus did this for you. And you tell them, the same Jesus that did this for me can do this for you as well. That friend knows how you struggled in that business. And how you went from place to place and every door was, was shut in your face and people abused and insulted you. But that friend knows that just by yourself, it was just a phone call that orchestrated you, that started everything and your life was turned around. That testimony can win a soul. It was the same thing when Jesus met the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Bible says that when Jesus finished with her, eh, by herself, nobody had to tell her. She ran into the city and told all the men and told everyone about the man Jesus that told her everything about her life. And she brought them to Jesus. Your testimonies are perfect soul winning examples. Hallelujah. Another way you can win a soul is through friendship or influence. Influence. And I think this is the biggest part in our day today. You know, um, we, another way is street evangelism. We do street evangelism. Street evangelism is fantastic. In a minute, I'll talk about that. But the, the one that gives me much joy is when I can leverage my influence to win a soul. You say you are a marketer. You bring in a billion every year for the bank. You say you are a business strategist. You strategize for the company and the company is now top of the Forbes list. You say you are, you, you, you know, you are, you are an event planner. You, you've planned all the biggest events. How many have you planned for Jesus? How many marketing have you done for Jesus? Marketer, marketer that does not market for Jesus. Is that one a marketer? Marketing for Jesus. Leveraging our influence. Because we already have leverage with those people. Quite alright. We have some leverage. So if you tell them, this is the way you ought to be. This is how your life ought to be. Let me introduce you to someone that can give your life meaning. That can help you connect the dots. Because of the leverage you have with them, they are perhaps more likely to listen to you than to listen to a stranger. There are certain people that as a pastor, I cannot reach. We cannot reach them. But you can. Because you have their, you have their pain. If you press it, they answer. But you've not pressed it for Jesus yet. That's why you haven't gotten this testimony. But I believe that we're getting the testimonies in Jesus' name. Another way you can win soul is by, is by what we call kingdom sponsorship. You can say, well, I can sponsor missionaries in Gabon, in Iran, in Iraq, in the northern part of Nigeria. I can send my money there. Trust me, yeah. Like Paul says, Paul planted, Apollos watered. God gave the increase. That same money, that same finance that God has blessed you with can do the same for you in Jesus' name. So how then do we evangelize? So we've talked about the ways in which we evangelize. How then? How then? So we say, but I, I want to. Yes, this is what I ought to be doing. Number one, first strategy, first point of call is the place of prayer. The place of prayer. Let's open to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians in chapter 4 in verse 4. And let's see why prayer is key and paramount in the soul winning journey. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. The Bible says that, And whom the God of this world had blinded, the God of this world referring to Satan, had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Say, lest they see the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine on them. This scripture is telling us that, you know what? The devil, everyone that is unsaved, the devil has covered their eyes. Trust me, what you're saying is making sense. What you're saying is logical. That Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer. Yes, it makes sense. But because they are blind, 
They just can't see. As smart as they are, they just can't understand. It just doesn't make sense that I will accept this Jesus that I've never seen, that you're telling me about, and then I will get eternal life. It just doesn't make sense, but it's not their fault. The Bible is telling us here that is a big, the reason is because the devil has covered their eyes. So the first point when trying to win a soul is a place of prayer. And the prayer is that, Father, the veil that the enemy has placed over their eyes, let it be lifted in the name of Jesus. That is how we pray. We don't pray and say, oh God, please, I'm praying for Shinene. Father, Lord, please just save her. The way this girl is living, the way she's going, hey, Lord, please just save her. No, 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 no. Bible already tells us that it is the Father's desire that none should perish, but that all should come to a knowledge of Jesus. So once we take that, we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the veil that the enemy has placed over their eyes, may it be their experience, may it be their mindset, their background, whatever they've gone through that has covered their eyes, strongholds in their minds, minds we pull them down first step prayer that's the first step so we take authority over the devil concerning the lost soul that is the first step stop trying to convince people you can't convince them it's prayer prayer so you start out by praying for them that is the first step the next step is to have your target I said something earlier, we're in a kingdom, and in this kingdom we are like soldiers. We're ambassadors of Christ. I have my target, I have my mark. Dead center, that guy. Not some guy, that guy, specific. Dipo, that guy. Shola, that guy. So because of what I know about them, I know what will work, what will connect them. Certain people, I just talk about fashion. We have a conversation. And from the conversation, I sleep in Jesus. Certain people, we talk about work. We talk about business. From there, you sleep in Jesus. That is the, the approach. So I start out praying. And when I've received the confirmation that the veil has been lifted, I identify my target. I initiate a conversation with my target. Then I pray again. And this is the reason why I will pray again. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 37, Jesus says something. That we should pray ye the Lord of the harvest. That he will send his laborers into his harvest. So when the veil has been taken off, when I have spoken to this person, I will now pray and say, Lord, whoever has the right word to influence this person for Jesus, I dispatch them now. Trust me, I'm, I'm saving souls in Tehran from Lagos. Because the people that are required, we are dispatching them by the Spirit. There are certain people you can talk to that I can't talk to. And so, I would pray and say, Lord, let necessity be laid on this person to talk to that other person. For the kingdom's sake. Remember, we are the body of Christ. The body of Christ. We are one. The church of Christ is one. It's not about harvesters. It's not about the church or the local assembly. It's about the fact that we are the body of Christ. So I pray yet again. And after praying, I invite if I can. And you must know that invitation, when you invite people... Most times, if you're a marketer, you know that most times when you knock on the door, they don't say yes. You go back again and again and again. In fact, statistics say from research that to get a conversion, you have to do it like five times. So if you, if you invite someone to church the first time, they don't answer, it's okay. You pray, you thank God, you invite again. You do, they don't come, you invite again. It took them a while to get me to church. It took them a while. It took them a while. And it took them a while. But I'm here now. And I'm sure the people that were chasing me then, if they could see me now, they would be glad they did. So don't give up. Don't give up. On that brother, on that sister, do not give up. Do not give up. And then finally, when you've done all of this, always seal the deal. 
As a marketer, you know you never leave the room until you get the deal. So before you leave them or move on, ask them, so are you ready to receive Jesus now? They may say, yes, no, yes, okay, I'll try, okay, whatever. But always, always, always leave them with a deal. Always live with a deal. Always live with a deal. You are a kingdom entrepreneur. Your business is soul winning. Your business is populating the kingdom of God. That is what we are here for. That is why God gives us the platforms and gives us the influence and gives us everything. If you look at yourself, everything about you is for just this one cause. That you might, by any means, win some for Christ. Have we learned something this morning? Can we bow down our heads and let us pray? And the prayer is this, that Lord, as we've thought, as we've spoken, as we've shared, certain people came to your heart, certain people came to your mind, and you really thought about them, and you're really moved with compassion, and you're saying, Lord, help me to reach this person. You are going to pray this morning and say, Lord, the veil that the enemy may have placed over their eyes, in the name of Jesus, this Sunday morning I pray, it is lifted, it is removed in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever that veil may be, you may know, you may not know. That veil may be their finance, that veil may be their relationship, that veil may be their, their job, may be their marriage, may be, may be their health, their, con their health condition, or may just be the cares of this world that has blinded them. You're going to say, Lord, I lift it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Next, you're going to pray and say, Lord, send forth the laborers into the harvest. Men and women that have the right words. It may be me, it may be somebody else. But in the name of Jesus, right now, we dispatch angels to quicken their steps, to quicken their minds, to make them alive to the reality of soul winning, to begin to speak on behalf of the kingdom to these people in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. There's a reason you're in their life. There's a reason God brought them your way. There is a reason you're working in that organization. There is a reason you have that business for such a time as this. And perhaps you are passionate about soul winning. Pray for more. Pray for more. Say, Lord, the grace and the strength to take it further. To take it a notch higher. To step it up. Father, the grace is available for me this day in Jesus' name. For some of us, we have been called to, to, to sponsor missionary work. To sponsor the work, the advancement, the movement of the gospel. Or you're going to pray that your bands are filled in the mighty name of Jesus. That the resources that are required, be it human, monetary, capital, whatever, that the Lord is bringing your way so that you can dispatch in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Why not put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. I'm a kingdom sponsor. I'm a man. I'm a woman of influence. I'm a kingdom entrepreneur. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And to that end.